Earlier this week, the four major party leaders met in North Bay for the first leader's debate of this campaign. It focused on issues confronting Northern Ontario. Nick Dunn covers the Northeast for Ontario Hubs, and he joins us now on how it went. Hello, Nick. Hi, Jan. All right, so we're going to talk about health care. Uh, Northern Ontario is not a monolith. There are a number of concerns that range throughout the, that part of Ontario. Talk to us about the concerns from that region specifically. Right. So healthcare here is a real problem. Every day I drive by um, uh, a street uh, on the Brady Street and there are 150 crosses there, um, all representing people who've lost their lives to the opioid crisis. This is just a reality in Northern Ontario where we have, you know, double the death rate than the rest of the province. And this is, you know, a huge issue that's affecting all the cities. Um, another one, just access to basic health care, particularly in the rural regions. So in Red Lake earlier this year, the emergency room had to shut down. And this is a mining town where there can be you know, severe accidents. And the, the nearest uh, emergency room for there was, you know, at least 100 kilometers away. A similar situation is unfolding in the town of Thessalon and uh, Bruce Mines right now. So the healthcare shortage here is very real. And, you know, Northern Ontario does see very acute issues around mental health and addictions. Did the leaders make any headway on those concerns? Right. So, you know, you can look at the, uh, the, the, the PC government under Doug Ford. They've implemented or they've, they've turned nor the Northern Ontario School of Medicine into an independent university. They've funded various PSW and nursing programs, but the shortage does persist. Um, I think, you know, the, the, the leaders did talk about uh, addressing the gap. So the NDP plan talks about addressing the uh, 300 doctor shortage uh, that's uh, been reported by the Northern Ontario School of Medicine. Uh, the liberal leader, uh, Stephen Del Duca, um, he promised uh, 24 hour, um, within 24 hours, you can get healthcare access. So bo boosting up the uh, healthcare system so that it's a little bit more accessible there. All right, I want to switch gears a little bit and I want to talk about transit and highways. So obviously a big conversation when we talk about Northern Ontario. I want to show a clip that shows a little heated exchange between the leaders on the topic of the Ontario Northland Transit Line. Well, Mr. Del Duca, very, very simple question. Why did you cancel the Northlander? And Ms. Horvath, you propped them up. You propped them up, so you were supporting canceling the Northlander and you canceled it. Why so, did you so, so really quick. So, uh, so Marcus, so really Marcus, quickly. can I uh, can I just ask a quick really question quickly. here? Yeah, if I, so, if I, Mr. It's, Mr. Ford it's, is right it's, about that. It's a direct but question. I have a question for Mr. Ford. Yeah. Will you actually bring back the Ontario Northlander? You, you promised that, promise that, that, that in your last platform in Dennett Deliver. We need the Northlander yes. and we also need expanded bus service from Ontario Northland yeah. for inner city bus yeah. connections. Are you actually going to do it this we're time or not? the only government that's bringing back the Northlander. All right, so I should mention that the Northlander Rail Service, uh, which operated from Toronto to Cochrane, was cancelled in 2012 by the then Liberal government, saying that it was too costly to be subsidized. So with that being said, why is the Northlander so important for these leaders to be debating about? Well, first of all, it's funny because all these parties are effectively uh, promising the return of the Northlander. So, you know, there was a lot of bickering about something that seems to be a bilateral issue, and yet still... Uh, isn't uh, operational yet. So I think that's a pretty emblematic issue of, uh, you know, politics in uh, Northern Ontario. So, but to get to your question, the Northlander, uh, it's very important because this is a, a 700 kilometer track, uh, passenger rail from Toronto to Cochrane. Um, not only is it uh, useful for tourism purposes, so bringing people from Southern Ontario pretty effectively and affordably up North in a speedy way without having to, you know, if they don't have a car, it's a little bit easier. But the big thing is healthcare. Um, healthcare appointments, you know, even if there are more hospitals and there, there are indeed hospitals across Northern Ontario, but, you know, specialists and specialized services, uh, are sometimes needed in the South, uh, particularly for Cochrane and, you know, communities like Moosonee, right. That have very acute healthcare needs, uh, that connect the James Bay coast. So having that direct access line to Toronto in an effective way is very, very important. Uh, you know, it's way, way easier than taking a long bus, trying to, you know, you know, find a car, uh, you know, someone to drive you down, what have you. Um, so it's a very important issue for people here, 
although it's not something that necessarily gets much uh, traction elsewhere in the province. It's a very regional issue. Outside of the Northlander, uh, what are the other parties uh, talking about when it comes to transit? Mm -hmm. Well, highways is a big is a big thing here. Um, you know, all the parties uh, have made various promises to you know expand uh, highway services. So you know, twin Highway 17 from uh, Kenora uh, out towards the Manitoba border, um, twinning Highway 69 up towards Sudbury, uh, implementing a two plus one system along Highway 11. But I think the key thing to understand here is that you know, in the Southern Ontario context. Uh, highway expansions typically involve, uh, you know, reducing congestion, perhaps uh, encouraging outward expansion. In Northern Ontario, it really is an issue of basic safety. You know, these are roads that people have to drive on every day, you know, sometimes for hundreds of kilometers. It goes through rough Canadian shield. They're very narrow and they just happen to be uh, a corridor for industrial and commercial traffic. You know, all sorts of trucks, industrial uh, trucking or you know for mining logging etc so it can be very dangerous you know very fatal and uh you know an accident can stop the whole highway up for a night you know in tomogamy people have to set up the legion for people who are stranded overnight to stay um and you know i think a lot of people are very concerned about the fatalities they keep seeing on the highways here I want to bring up two more uh, hot topic issues, affordability and the housing crisis. Um, they emerged as big issues in general. Um, did the debate reveal any s real solutions uh, in terms of tackling those issues? Hmm. So affordability, I mean, you know, I think the, the, the PC government is, uh, you know, touting its uh, jobs programs, you know, trying to stimulate the economy with its critical mineral strategy. You know, I think uh, the Liberal Party, it didn't necessarily get mentioned in the debate, but they're leaning towards uh, immigration, bringing on an immigration minister, uh, which could help uh, grow the region here. Um, and then the Ontario uh, Greens and the NDP, uh, I think, are focused on, um, you know, improving services to make uh, life a little bit easier on people. So they're all different ways of tackling affordability. Um, on housing, again, I think this is uh, this is an issue that kind of goes across the province. Uh, but unfortunately, the speculation in the GTA has really begun to affect uh, housing prices up here. I mean, far more affordable than the South, but a 60 percent uh, price increase from 2019 to 21, 2021 rather in North Bay is a real shock, not just to the to the housing market and affordability, but to the rental market as well. Um, and there are various uh, builds in place, you know, promises to build housing. I believe the Ontario uh, Liberal Party is creating the Ontario Home Building Corporation. So they'd be building homes to uh, first time home buyers uh, and they'd be financing that through that. There's a similar plan with the NDP, the Ontario Housing uh, Agency, which would be building rental housing for uh, families and keeping it within the kind of rental system. And then for the Ford government, they've said that they want to continue implementing their housing affordability strategy, which our uh, colleague uh, John Michael McGrath has written about quite a bit uh, for TVO.org. So I'd uh, look at his analysis uh, for what that strategy could entail. Nick Dunn, really appreciate your time and thank you so much for your insights of Northern Ontario for us people down south. Thank you again. Thanks, Jane. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.